Welcome everyone. Super happy to see some familiar faces. Those of you who are new, I want to say welcome, welcome. Awesome. We're going to just take a couple moments here to get settled. You are at the right spot. You're at transform people's lives through your creative business and earn money doing it as a creative guide. So that is what we're going to be focusing on today. Are you all ready to learn some, some techniques? You're like, yes. Katri's like, yes. Bring it on. <laughs> awesome. So we have a, a, just let's wait a minute to see if we can get people in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick a card for you. Is that okay? We'll do like a collective card pool. Do you guys like that idea? Okay. So I'm going to shuffle, let's see what comes through as we're waiting for people to show up. All right. Hope everyone's having a good morning. I'm excited to be here. I'm a little anxious, but I'm excited. Every time I show up on one of these things, I'm like, oh my gosh, are people coming? It's so fun to see your faces. Ooh. We got a sacral chakra card, which is, um, if you guys can see it, it's, it's, we have some fish eating at the flower of life. So this is, um, it says choose joy. Happiness is an inside job. You always have a choice. Choose something to do today that lights you up. All right. So I think we can incorporate that into our meetup today, okay, about choosing joy. I mean, Maybe that's the reason that you came here, right? You're just like, I want to have fun. I want to have a business that makes money and I want to have fun doing it. So we will infuse that in what we're going to do today. And if you happen to have a journal or any kind of art materials, you're welcome to get those out to take notes. Um, we might do a little creative exercise in here as well, just because I always feel like that's fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am going to be talking about, um, you know, about my business. Um, I'm an artist and an art therapist, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit about like my story and how I've been supporting others um, in the process of showing up, right? Showing up so that you can uh, be successful and sharing your mission and uh, being able to have that ripple effect and, and lifting others along the way. Okay, so if you have, you know, tried some things in the past um, that maybe that haven't worked, um, I just want to let you know that it's not your fault. Um, and I also want you to know that you can put those fears to rest because a part of the process of showing up is a, it's like a big experiment, but there are certain frameworks that uh, do, that do work and um, it, a lot of times it's just ourselves that get in the way right it's a lot of times it's imposter syndrome feeling that we're not good enough. Uh, maybe uncertainty. And so we're going to address uh, some of those issues today and how that shows up and how I've been able to tackle them as well. Okay. So we're going to be um, learning um, about those tips and tools. And I'm really curious about who's here. So I'm going to just ask you, you know, what is your background? Like, how do you identify yourself? I mean, are you an art therapist? Are you an art facilitator, an art coach? I don't know, there's so many different names and titles and things. So whatever you identify as, could you put that in the chat? Because I'd like to know who you are and like, what do you identify as? Oh, Jen asked me, did I make those cards? Yes, I made these about a year ago. Um, it's called The Art of Healing and Manifesting um, Oracle Deck. And I made a book also as well that goes with it the book has art techniques this has daily spiritual practices oh jen's an art therapist too kate's an art therapist wonderful creative mentor Ooh, like that creative visionary Woohoo! art psychotherapist expressive art therapist creative coach art curator beautiful i love that ah uh, okay yeah, so it's kind of like we put on these like different hats. Like I call call myself an artist. I call myself an art therapist. I um, I do creative coaching, and it's been in an evolution. And I have to say uh, that's how my business has been. It's been an evolution, right? Um, so I'm kind of curious. Are you 
have you already started your business? Like, are you actually in it? Like, is it the beginning phase or have you been doing it for a few years? Kind of let me know in the chat too of like where you're at in this idea of like necessarily business. I'd like to see, Cindy says she's just thinking about it. So she's just starting up, okay. Took a break from COVID, trying to restart. Okay, one year in, oh, okay, awesome. All right, so no matter what level you're at, it, there's like, it, that's great. It's like you could be here just starting or you could um, have a few things already in place. All right, Teresa, she has a lead magnet, but not an offer. Okay, and everyone's like, what is a lead magnet for those of you who have heard of? <laughs> and that's actually something that we um, we talk about in the Thriving Creative course. I'm gonna be uh, discussing a little bit about the Thriving Creative course as well, because that's gonna be starting in May. So I'm gonna let you know about that. Um, so lead magnets, just so that people know, that's a, an offer, like a freebie that you give out so that people will say, hey, what is this? And I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Okay, so yeah, so all this business talk, um, this is important stuff because when you start to learn the tools about business and marketing and um, how to put yourself out there and how you can use a framework uh, to do it, it gives you a lot of clarity, okay? And it comes from actually showing up and doing the work, right? Of, of And it can be fun, because I don't want to scare you off, go like, oh, this sounds like a big headache or an overwhelm, but it doesn't have to be. It really can be fun and, and learning how to do this uh, type of work, okay? So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how I kind of, I don't wanna say stumbled into this because I really did make this intentional, um, but I've learned and co-created with community to get to where I'm at right now, even sharing this webinar with you. So um, like I had mentioned, I'm an artist and art therapist. Um, I actually got my master's back in 2003 and I can't believe it's been 20 years that I've been practicing. It's just like, oh my God, where did the time go, right? Um, and in that time, I've written three art therapy books, uh, which is very exciting. Here's a couple of them and I have a new one coming out this summer. Uh, I haven't really talked about it too much, but it's um, gonna be coming out. And I started online just a few years ago about offering art therapy. And what I've learned from um, offering those art therapy um, sessions is that when you've done the inner work, when you started to do the healing, then the clients that I had were ready to show up in a bigger way and share those lessons, those tools to other people right to make that ripple effect right so when we start a business we definitely want to be in that good mindset that good mind space of like oh wow i can hold space for myself because you need a lot of self-care right but i also can hold space for other people and that's really um important um so just to kind of give you a little bit more backstory um kind of like of, of the evolution um like you know i mentioned you know practicing for 20 years but it actually um, came from my own dark night of the soul. If you don't know what that is, that is um, a point of, of my life when I was experiencing depression and anxiety. And it was when my kids were really little and I was just incredibly burned out, uh, burned out from just, just being a mom, um, working full time. And um, it came to the point where I needed support, right? I remember just like crying in my bathroom, um, and just saying like, how did I get here? It's like three o'clock in the morning. I was like, I can't sleep. I can't take care of myself. What do I do? So uh, I even felt guilty about even getting support, like investing in, in hiring an art therapist. So, but I did it, I did it. And I'm so happy I did because when we invest in ourselves, it's that opportunity to grow, right? And so I got the support that I did, that, that I needed. And I got that, the mental health, you know, in, in a good spot. And then what came to me in those sessions was that I wanted to show up bigger, right? I got a calling, like the universe said, hey, you need to be selling your art. Hey, you need to show up online and, and support more people in a bigger way, okay? That was my calling. So I answered the call. I was like, okay, well, how do I do this? And part of answering that call was that I had to learn about money. <laughs> I had to learn about um, how much do I charge? And because yes, I was practicing, but I, I'm working for an organization, you get a paycheck, whatever. But it was like more of like when you show up um, as an independent practice as, as someone that's showing up online, 
it was it was different it's like when someone had asked me how much is your painting my body shook as like i went into this fight or flight mode and i had all this anxiety about it and i'm like what is going on and i was like oh my gosh this is a sign i need help again i need to hire a coach and that freaked me out too but i did it like i stretched myself i said let me hire a coach so i hired a coach and i learned that I had uh, learned how to have a relationship with money, learn how to do, do my budgeting, learning how to put a, a number on um, what my offers were and learning about my own self-worth. And by stepping up, by taking that action, um, I learned to trust myself, right? And then I learned a framework of how to build a community, how to nurture a community, um, and then make offers that co-created with the community, right? So like I had mentioned, like. I didn't start off doing art therapy online because I didn't feel like anybody knew about it. And I just felt like that it just wasn't resonating with people. So I started off just creating community about chakras because that ex was exciting for me, um, spirituality, law of attraction, so things like that. And that's where my community started. And then I started stepping into like the art therapy and letting people know. So it started with that. And then that's when it started more into the business and, and the coaching as well, because um, you know, I, I got my undergraduate in art, uh, but they didn't teach me about business or how to sell things. And my master's in art there, but they didn't teach me any of that as well, how to market myself or put myself out there. And I hear today they still don't do that, which is unfortunate because as artists, as creatives, we have so much medicine to offer people and, you know, we need to know how to like get it out into the world. So this is kind of that missing link that I want to show you of how to do that, of how to, to show up um, and do that. So you might be thinking, like, does this apply to me in some way? Like, it is um, my story. Uh, you might be here thinking, uh, you know, how do I find people? I'm kind of curious is what is, um, what is, where do you feel like you might be like stuck? Is it, is it like finding people? Is it like, where do you feel like, like you would need like more support? I'm curious. Um, Carolyn says they don't prepare you for private practice in school, just how to do the work in hospitals or community mental health or in schools. Right, right. So I feel like this is the missing link. So that's why I went and took a lot of coaching and a lot of um, business courses so that I could get um, understand the framework, right? Understanding how to to build it. Um, clarity on my offering. Yes, yes. Getting really clear on what you have to offer, right? And a lot of times that comes from your own life experiences, getting out of your own way. That's a lot of the mindset. Yes, believing in myself. Yes, all oh, this is so good. Okay, beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna share something with you um, because I get this question a lot and they ask me, you know, are you teaching art therapy? And I'm like, no, I'm not teaching art therapy. I am, as a creative coach, um, I work with art therapists and I work with creatives, whatever title that you want to give yourself. Um, but I just kind of want to show you, let me, let's see. Is it, no, hold on one second. I'm going to make this big. Do you guys all see this big? Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to show you the difference between like what, what an art therapist is and what of like a creative coach is because so I was saying the people get a little confused. Um, so an art therapist um, it has a master's degree, their credentials, um, they actually have to take a test and supervision hours. So it's their art therapy registered or board certified and they use psychotherapy to address mental health. Okay, so whether you're dealing with depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety, um, past traumas, you know, sexual abuse, neglect, things like that. They're equipped to deal with, with those by using these different theoretical models and art as a way, right? So, um, so that's the part for the art therapy. But as a creative coach, as an art coach or whatever the title that you wanna give yourself, I put a lot of different ones here, healer, guide, art facilitator, you have this opportunity to show up as well and teach from your life experience, right? Because your story is your message. And this could be your niche of who you're calling in. It's from your life experiences, okay? So some, um, most, of, most of the people that I've worked with do have an artistic background in some way. They're already artists, but they just wanna show up and get the, the business tools, right? Get that framework. And art making for self-care. 
anytime that we're making art, it is self-care. It, it's like 45 minutes of art making does reduce that cortisol level, right? So it's like already going to happen. But it's being able to use, um, you know, techniques that are going to um, support whoever you're working with, right, to help them feel good, right? So it's like calling in your niche and then making an offer for them, okay? So I just kind of wanted to clarify that. So in case you get confused um, about like what an art therapist is, then, um, then you know, right? Um, and I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about how, um, you know, like looking at frameworks, especially for businesses. And what does that look like? Um, and it looks like, where you're like building a house when I talk about a structure and framework because I know that I said that several times already it really is about creating something that's going to support you um and, and, and a space to hold your people that you're calling in right and having that offer so when you think about like if you want to build a house you got to have um like the the structure of the cement poured down you got to build the walls right you have to put the roof on and then you got to decorate, right? And then you, you put all this together and then you're saying like, hey, come on in, come on into my party. I want to hold space for you. I want to give you this offering, right? So it's creating that framework, that structure. That's how I see the Thriving Creative Business Course. It's like giving you that structure so that you can have that party, bringing people in, right? And that's how I see my own business. I feel like I have my, my party for my Creative Soul Society membership. I have my party for my art therapy services. And then I get to have my parties for um, my creative coaching group that I work with that we're starting in May, right? So I, my big dream, because we're gonna talk about our big dream right now, is like, I wanna have a creative empire. Why not, right? I can have multiple. This is fun because I get to create more offers, right? And my business supports that and the community supports that. And so this is about like creating your own community that it will support you and having those offers and, and building that up, okay? Um, what we're gonna do now is I wanna, I wanna start seeing what it is that you wanna offer, okay? So I'm just gonna ask you, if you don't mind, if you wanna close your eyes, and imagine creating that structure that I was just talking about, just like building a house. This could be your own art studio. This could be you working from your home, or it could be you're going out somewhere to work or creating your own empire, your own business. And you create that structure. And what does that look like when you're in it? Are you working online with people? Are you working in person? Okay, so start thinking about those people, these, these clients of yours that are coming because they want to learn from you. They want what you have. They want what you are teaching, right? What you are offering, right? And you're holding this space for them in this structure. And this lights you up so much. You can put your hands on your heart and just feel your heart lighting up, right? It makes you happy. You feel satisfied. You feel joy. And then as your heart lights up, the people who are there light up, right? They're so happy to be learning from you, to be engaging with you, to be creating with you. And again, that takes a ripple effect because when they leave, and they're gonna come back, but when they do leave, they're gonna be sharing that ripple effect. They're gonna be sharing their love, their light with others, right? And it's just like a circuit board lighting up. And how incredibly powerful if we all stepped into that, right? We all stepped in to light everyone up. And I think it's possible because I believe in art and I believe in the superpower of creating and healing. And I think that we all can do it. So if you feel inspired, I'm going to be talking more about three secrets that I, um, that's why you came here to learn more. But if you feel inspired as I'm talking, you are welcome to draw out what you saw. How do you see yourself stepping into your vision? What does that business look like for you? Okay, so you can get out your journal, markers, whatever you have, and you're welcome to create as I, as I speak. 
All right. And if you feel inspired, I'd love to see what you wrote or what came up for you. You can write it in um, in the chat. Okay, Rachel asked me, could I explain the task again? Yeah, what kind of business would you like to have? What came up when you visualize of you stepping into your creative business? What does that look like for you? All right, and I'll just give you an example. Like, I didn't know I was going to have a membership group. I really didn't. I started doing these free experiences, and uh, I started talking to people from the free experiences. I was letting them taste some of the, my medicine, right, to some of my art, ex art exercises that I like to work with. And then when I was talking to someone after the free experience, they're like, I really want community. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, I want to work in community, and we can, like, make art together, like, online. And I was like, oh, I could do that. So that's why I created the Creative Soul Society membership. And I can't believe it. It's going to be three years this August that we've been doing the Creative Soul Society membership. And we meet twice a month, right? So this is part of, our, of that process. It's a co-creation. It's listening and then being able to create what your people want, the people who are interested in what you're interested in, and then creating that for them, right? All right, Rebecca would like to create an art room with space so when people come in, they can work on their problems and do art while we talk. That sounds nice. Awesome, what else? What other, there's like 50 people here. I would love to hear what it is that you'd like. Ooh, art retreats, amazing, beautiful. Yeah, going to some exotic place or even some bigger hometown and hold space for people. An online art club, oh, I love that. A membership group, share my creative practices, mandala meditation, move space, journaling, expressive collage, creating handmade art journals. Awesome, that's perfect. Yeah, and don't be scared to, you know, be able to share what it is that lights you up, right? And because you are here because you have that calling to do that. Right. So I've been able to support um, others doing the same thing. For example, Natalia had the idea of uh, having a podcast of supporting others in their own self development. So she started her podcast by working in the three creative three thriving creative course. Liz is an art therapist and she wanted to bring her practice online and hold self care groups and she's been able to do that right. Oh, Linda wants to work in senior centers beautiful oh, they definitely need uh, lots of love and support. Kristen, another one of my clients, um, she is an, a recovering addict and she offered art self-care art classes um, for those um, other people who are in recovery, right? So she's taking some a part of her story and then being able to help others who have experienced that, right? Um, we have Jen Colombo. Uh, she's been a part of the Thriving Creative course this year and she started the Creative Explorers membership group and she also creates uh, Oracle decks and, and branding, right? So there's so many different directions, but I think it's like an evolution. It grows and it evolves, right? But there is a framework that I practice, that I've been practicing for the few years that does work, okay? And that's what I teach in the Thriving Creative Course. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it. Um, and you are able to find your clients through community by calling the people who are resonating with you, right? So when they resonate with you, um, then they get to know you like you trust you in this community, right? I'm gonna just read what Leslie says. I'm a trained therapist that does telehealth art therapy. Currently, you want to also an in-person and art studio where creatives can come to heal together. I also want an online store. Beautiful, all that is happening, Leslie. I see it. So finding your clients is creating a space for them to come, right, and experience you, right? So that's just part of the free experiences that I do, right? Um, and I remember just being really scared for showing up online. Like I'm telling you, I'm anxious today even showing up, but um, I had to practice. I had to, I remember the first time I even posted on Facebook, which was, it feels like a while ago, but uh, I went and hid under my covers. Like literally that's how scared I was about showing up online. Um, but gradually the baby steps of 
hey, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and this is how it can benefit you. When I was able to start telling my stories, that's when people were resonating, especially even my own burnout story, because I mean, I was in a dark place, but I work with so many psychologists and our therapists and others who have that same burnout because I tell that story. And that's how like a lot of my clients are because of that experience, right? Um, and so when you do the work, when the work on yourself, that's when you can show up and share that story and, and those, those people that you are going to be able to help will find you, right? So this is how like I started building my, com my community. Okay, so you also, so I, I was talking to you about how community is important. Right, so part of the thriving creative course is showing up um, and showing you how to nurture a community um, and being a leader right holding being able to hold space right and as you do that it's so cool how the magic happens not only do you find like your clients i've also gotten my book deals from that that, uh, that because i was showing up consistently and um publishers were reaching out to me say hey can you create this book would like to work with you um and i've been able to like i had mentioned before create the membership group and um find our therapy clients from from doing that right so it's about nurturing the community co-creating with them um and really learning how to manage your time okay so this is part of um what i teach as well is is like being able to tackle procrastination. A lot of times people like to put things in the back burner or they don't like doing certain tasks like writing emails, right? So like just looking at that content creation and being able to put it into a framework and a format so that it becomes easy. That it's like you set a date and you show up for it, right? And as you show up, as you take that action, the momentum comes and it feeds you and it builds upon itself, right? And then the other part is knowing how to even price your offers. I think that's really important about, you know, learning what your own relationship is. And I do a lot of uh, work with my clients around that because it's so important to put a number because it's an energy exchange, right? And in being able to get paid for your energy. Okay. How does everyone feel about showing up online? I'm so curious. You want to put it in the chat. Are you showing up now? Are you letting people know what you're doing? I'm so curious. You can put it in. Oh, good. Carolyn says, I am comfortable online. You go, girl. Yeah. Showing up, being shown. Actually, Carolyn is actually going to be joining us in the next Thriving Creative course. I'm very excited about that. Um, and she built her own last business through social media. Yeah, social media is a powerhouse. And when you can see it as a way to network and a way to communicate, that is where you're just going to the pockets. You're going to the pockets of people who already resonate with you and letting them know what you're offering, right? And it could be free because that is a good thing. There is an energy exchange there, but then you can also offer something that is for sale. So Pamela says she's comfortable, but needs to learn let a lot more. Um, I challenged myself last year to do an IG Reels for 90 days. Oh, that's a big challenge. Oh, beautiful. Um, Tab Tamantha does meditation online. Okay, so Eleanor says she gets nervous because she feels like she's being judged. I, I used to be that way as well. Um, I'm a recovering people pleaser. <laughs> That's where the burnout began. And then I realized that, um, you know, for me to step into my power, I really had to start to say no to people. And that was really scared. It was you know, scary for me because I cared so much about what other people thought. Like I was looking for validation outside of myself, right? And so when we're looking for that validation outside of ourself, um, we're never going to be fulfilled. We're never going to be satisfied. So this is when I had to change my own way of going about things so like when i show up online i'm doing it for my mission 
Okay, obviously I do want to support other people, right? And I do want it to resonate, but I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm doing it because I'm so passionate about what I'm doing, about what I'm teaching, what I'm showing up for, that that's what pulls me up, right? So my ego, which everyone, we all have them, the ego likes to keep you small, right? The ego is going to say, oh, you're not good enough, or um, you could have done that better, or you're going to mess up. You know, the ego wants to keep you small, right? So it's learning how to say, oh, yeah, there you are, ego. I, I know who you are. But my faith in myself, my faith in my mission, my faith in my seeing my empire, right? I see it as an empire, the, my structure um, of building it is is what rises me. And it's like, you know what? I can do this. And I might, might, I might make mistakes. I remember perfectionism is a killer, okay? And I used to be perfectionist as well. I was like, oh, this isn't right. Um, I can't do this because it's not perfect. And when you can be okay with messing up, and give some self-compassion to yourself and just say, you know what, you are gonna mess up. And you're probably gonna suck a lot at first and you're gonna get better, right? If you can have self-compassion, that's what helps you show up, right? Because it's about gaining your voice, right? And the more that you show up, the more your voice comes out, the more your message comes out, the more the people are gonna understand you and find you, okay? So it all builds, it's like a building blocks, right? It's all building upon itself oh you hear a strange noise oh i apologize let me see if i can okay sorry about that i put my um my um thing was on low so i just put it on high uh, rebecca says that's what i've been working on losing skills due to illness i'm learning that it doesn't have to be perfect yeah um most definitely, it's just being able to, wherever you're at, just building the next block, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect and it can be messy and you build as you go. Because a lot of times you think, oh my gosh, I gotta get another couple letters at the end of my name, right? Or I have to go back to school to do this or um, I gotta get my following before. But the thing is, is that it's the journey that people like. People like to see you grow. People like to see where you're at. They might ignore you at first and that's okay. But people do like to see you grow and see, you know, what you're working on. And part of that process is, is, is beautiful. And then you're calling in people as they get to know you and like you, right? Okay. So, so we're getting clear on who our, our ideal clients are, because it's going to be different for every one of you. You all have different life experiences, right? Um, and then being able to share your message, right? And then build your community. And then the most, I think this is the biggest part is showing up consistently. That's my, my third secret is you have to show up consistently because and it kind of bothers me when I, when I, um, you know, I have certain people that I, that I like to follow and I have their email list, but they only show up when they want to sell something. And I'm like, oh, like, that's not cool. It's like, I want to be nurtured all the time. Like I love like even Gabby Bernstein, I love her because she shows up in my inbox on Monday mornings and she always has some sweet message. And yes, she does sell things. And, and that's, a, that's great. I get excited about it. I'm just like, I love her consistency. And it is important to be consistent. It's important to show up um, so that people know that you are going to follow through, that you are a person of your word and that you are on a mission, right? Um, Don says, love that. Being willing to show up messy and vulnerable is a step in the right direction. I don't always feel comfortable speaking and I feel that I am better writer. So I feel like I'm getting out of my comfort zone and practicing and will, it will get better. Yes, it does. It does. It gets better and it's okay if we mess up. Like the other day I sent out an email and I had someone write me back. They're like, you spelled the word your wrong. Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. And I was like, oh my God. And then, you know, I didn't freak out. And I know probably like a year ago, I probably would have said, I'm never writing an email again. Because <laughs> I would have been so embarrassed. But I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that I'm not freaking out. And that was like such a big, huge self-compassion hug. I was like, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of myself that I messed up and I'm okay with it. And that's all right. I am going to mess up. I'm going to spell things wrong. And it, it is messy and you're going to just put yourself out there and it's, it's going to be okay because the people who like you and know you and trust you are going to show up. 
and support you and you support them. It's a, that co-creation, right? Okay, this is the three secrets again, let me go backwards. Um, the first one is, you know, being able to find your ideal clients, right? And you do that through community, right? The second one is showing up as a leader in that community, okay? And the third one is about being consistent because you can't just do it here or there, random. It really should be um, consistent with how you nurture, educate, inspire your people. Okay, and that's really what I what I teach in the Thriving Creative courses because, um, you know, even writing emails. I think emails is where everyone gets stuck. They're like, I don't want to write the email, <laughs> and the, all emails are is a communication tool, just a way to like say, hey, I'm here. And when you're in front of someone's mind, they are going to think of you, right? So whether you're selling your art or you're selling a service, being in someone's front of mind is going to, they're gonna think of you first. Like, oh, let me reach out to her because, hey, there she is again. Oh, there she is again. So they know that you're open, you're available, that you wanna work, right? You're gonna support them in some way. So if you look at it as a way to you know, educate, providing, you're giving from a place of heart, right? You're giving from a heart space, right? So you're nurturing, you're inspiring. Um, it makes it fun. It makes it light. I, I had a, a consultation call this morning and she, the person uh, who I was talking to said, you know, I've, I've just been loving your emails because, you know, some of the things I've been using with my own clients. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. That makes me happy. That means it's like, it could, it's like the ripple effect, right? And I was like, oh man, that makes me excited to go write that email instead of being like, oh, I gotta write an email. It's just sharing the love. So it's really like a mindset shift of like how to show up. Um, and create um, a game plan, a marketing plan, a business plan, um, and calling people in for the party, right? So we'll have a party. Having a party. Okay. So I know some people might get stuck on even like the selling, when they look at it as a selling, but like I said, it's coming from a heart space. You're supporting, you're supporting them in some way. Um, just to give you another quick little story, I remember when I was telling you about like that fight or flight when someone would ask me how much something was and I would go into this like panic mode. Um, I did want to make some money. And I'm like, how, how do people make money? I don't get, so I went on Google, not Googled, but I went on YouTube and I was like, how to make a thousand bucks. And I found this guy, it was such a great YouTube. He was like selling things um, on eBay. And he's like, if you want to make a thousand bucks, just go in your closet and start selling things. And I did it. I just followed the steps that he did. I just went in my closet, cleared out a whole bunch of crap. I sold over a thousand bucks. I had so much fun. I didn't realize that selling could be fun. I was selling like some random old dolls, a camera, just trinkets that I had and people wanted it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so, it became very addicting. Um, so that was just like a way of me to realize how sunny, selling can be fun, right? And I feel the same way in my, in my business. I get excited when I sell a deck or get to package a book or um, have a new client that I got today. Like, yes, hello, bring it on, right? Like, yay, that's such a different me than I was a few years ago, right? Because I've been doing the work. So it's part of it is making it fun. We're going back to that card we pulled today. It's fun to do this. It's fun to step into your power, step into your offers and sharing the love. Um, Eleanor, so I feel like I don't have enough time for email generating newsletters and creating art and teaching workshops. Okay, so this is boundaries, right? And you got to go back to what is important. We all have 24 hours in a day and being able to master your time. Because anytime that we say, I don't have it, it's like that lack place. If you want to manifest something, you tell yourself, I have time and how can I, right? Really looking at your schedule and saying, how can I make this happen? And let the universe provide. It is so amazing how we have so much control over that and people feel like it's like oh i can't do this but the thing is if you can make the time you make the time you look at your schedule and say how can i do this get in that mindset i'm going to do this and you can take it like a, like a little love affair like you 15 minutes bite-sized chunks every day if you can commit to that that's where the ripple effects happen right because then you get excited first you're like oh, only 15 i gotta like open up the email provider you know but 15 minutes of like stepping into it, a lot can happen if you can dedicate because it's a commitment. And it's not like 
if you're going to start a business, you don't want to just do it for a year. No, this is a long-term game. You know, this is like, you want to step into it, but you really want to invest in yourself because people, if you want people to invest in you, they want to know that you're going to invest in yourself. Right. So it's changing that mindset as well. Uh, Dawn says, I have your deck. What, so what did I miss with the card? Oh, I, we pulled the joy card, right? So it's like learning how to make things fun. Choose joy, happiness. Because remember, when you do the work, that's when you can have the ripple effect. If you don't do the work for yourself, you're not going to have this. If I didn't do my money work, I wouldn't be able to sell offers or products. I'd be scared still, right? Um, and the same thing with like the business courses. I had to invest in that just so that I could do the work. Right. So it's all interrelated. It's all, it's all interrelated. And we have to look at different aspects of our life and work on those. Right. So a part of this is um, having fun, getting excited about it, uh, making systems that support you. Um, you know, I work better in the morning, so I will, you know, spend time in the morning to write my emails. Right. Um, this is important to, you know, get clear on your numbers. How many people do you want to call in, you know, um, and having different money streams. I don't make all my money from one place. I do look at, um, you know, I do, I do sell books. I do workshops in person. I see people in person. I see people online. So I think I do a lot of different things, but that's what ex excites me. So Linda says, I I'm afraid because I failed in the past. And I haven't found the right path. Okay. Um, personally, I feel that we have to be open to experimentation and say, okay, if this doesn't work, that's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up over it, but how can I find a way that works for me? So I'm telling you the framework that I practice um, is something that works for me. And this is why I teach it. And it gets me to show up. I could sit in my studio and get lost, but then nobody would know what I'm doing. <laughs> but so this is why I show up so that people know that I'm working on things and I'm sharing things and I can co-create with people, right? Um, okay, Patri says, the question in my mind when I scroll through IG and Facebook creative pages, is there room in the creative world for me? Most definitely, because your life experiences are unique for you. Right. And I know you, I've, I've spoken to you before about your creative mingles clubs. And it is, it's about, you know, putting it on the front burner and saying, I want to do this. And, and you have to, this, you might want a small business. You might just want to work locally. That's okay. You can do that. I work with clients that do do that. You know, they just wanted to work with um, small groups and they didn't want to do online. But then I have some people that do want to grow. Like for personally, I do want to grow. I like reaching a larger audience. I love working with people. Um, like a Becca's from the UK, you know, like I love like being able to reach people and in, in, in different places. So it's, it's just saying, yes, you are worthy and stepping into it. And you have to answer the call, right? So if you answer the call, you got to get in the ring and say, okay, I'm doing this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Oh, and someone's in Dubai. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and keep Sharon, just some other people who have actually done the work as well. Because I had mentioned Kristen, who was in recovery, and then she showed up to run her own groups in, re in recovery for self-care, right? Um, another client that I had, Heather, she wanted to, she just wanted to do in-person workshops, and she was able to do that, right? Um, and Jen, uh, Columbo, she's not here today, but she said she wanted to be, she said I, she's been doing the Creative um, Explorers Club. Right. And she also does decks and, and journals for people. Um, Jamalyn Ambroski uh, started the Aurora Therapeutic Arts. Uh, and even Becca, who's here, she's doing the Creative Goddess and she just created a course that's going to be coming out in June journaling course. So there is enough room for everybody. You just think about how many coaches are out in the world. It's like a billion dollar business, like industry, right? That's like, is there enough, is there the same amount of artists that are doing this kind of work? No, but we need to, because we know how powerful it is. We know that it's medicine and they now have brain studies to 
to actually say, hey, it just does, is working. Like they have brain scans that are like supporting it. Or it was just like, oh yeah, I do feel better. But now it's like, oh my God, your brain is actually doing things. Like there's neuroplasticity, things are moving. <laughs> Healing is taking place. So it's happening, it's happening. So it's just like, well, let's show up for it. Let's educate people why this is important, right? Um, and it is, it's super, super important. Okay, so what we've covered so far is we talked about your clients because everyone's clients here are going to be different, like finding your niche. Um, we talked about being a leader, taking in your power and building your own community around that, and then showing up consistently and making money because you do want to make offers as well um, that are going to support the people who are there in your community, right? So that's the co-creation. Okay, so I'm curious, are you open to hearing a little bit about the Thriving Creative Course and the, that framework that I'm talking about? Yeah. Rebecca said, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because if you practice the framework that I teach in the course, you literally can be making money in three months. Like it's, it's just like step-by-step, step, but you got to do the work. It's not for people who are just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to put it over there and it's going to make it. No, it's like, I'm going to show up and I'm going to, I'm going to practice it. Right. That's how um, it works. Okay. So I'm going to share my slides again. Um, hold on one second. Okay. So a part of this is about calling in your dream clients, nurturing them, leadership skills, how to present. I teach you how to present, um, how to understand your clients, what their needs are, what their pain points are, and what you create is going to benefit them, right? So you learn about heartfelt cells. Um, you learn how to tackle your imposter syndrome or procrastination, um, and creating those offers that are going to um, be beneficial and powerful for, for your people, right? We all have different people, and that's what makes a ripple effect. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you all see the big me holding a light? <laughs> yeah, okay. So I have a program. It's a year-long program called the Art of Healing and Manifesting program. And this has evolved. Every year it changes. I add things to it. I move it around. Um, so what I've been doing is offering um, the Thriving Creative course in it. So this is, is something new that I've been doing. Um, and it's an eight-week coaching, live coaching, where we meet as a community and um, I teach you what I've, everything that I've been talking about, I teach you that framework. And then we also have time to problem solve and work with each other um, and supporting each other in the community. So you have time to so get that hand holding, right? So the Art of Healing Manifesting, like year-long program, you get like three rounds. So each time that you show up, you you have a new goal and you're working on that next level, okay? So I have people that, have, that join the, the full year and they're evolving using this framework on uh, multiple times, right? Um, and they get to do the thriving creative course that I just talked about um, in showing up and how to sell those offers, how to put it together, um, how to create content, right? So putting it together. So a part of this, what I'm, um, this thriving creative course, I put together a package today that if something that you're leaning into, like listen to your body, like mm, I'm interested in creating something that's ready to put out into the world. Cause I want to save you money. I don't want to actually, for you to feel like you need to go out and get another degree or doing a whole bunch of other things. Like I really do want you to think that, Hey, I could learn things here and be supported. So part of this package includes the creative soul society membership. And that is art for self-care. That's the main focus of it. We meet two times a month for art making and like we're doing burnout next week. Very cool. And our therapist is teaching us about burnout and gratitude. And then I'm doing another art, art technique about um, texture at the end of the month. So you get that um, and you get coaching. And when I've done um, my own business courses, like I've took business courses so I can learn about frameworks and structure and how to make money. Um, some of them had personal coaching and I love that. I love being able to sit one-on-one -on -one with someone and being able to get their ideas and brainstorm. And this is where I'm stuck. So I do offer that. And in this package that I put together, um, 
it's a smaller package for the, the big year program, but this smaller package, it um, has seven coaching sessions so that you get that one-on-one -on -one, um, to deal with whatever that you're feeling stuck on, procrastination, imposter syndrome, um, you know, mindset stuff, getting that clarity around there. Um, I talked about the, the group mastermind. And I made a whole bunch of bonuses this time around. Like I said, I changed things up. So for those of you who have taken it before, um, I've, I'm kind of seeing where you want extra support, okay? So I've put together a social media marketing plan that has over 100 ideas, right? So that you can market. And you can look at it and be like, oh yeah, I could do that, right? So I have that. This is on the back end of my new site. Um, how to overcome, overcome imposter syndrome. How to tackle procrastination. So these are, I'd like to teach through art making. So these are art experiences that you can do to um, help you, support you, right? And I've done some done for you content and lesson plans. And the reason I put this together, um, this is not material from any, either of my books because those are copyrighted. This is something that you can use for self-care, uh, that you can use for um, your own groups. And I did this, for example, with Kristen in, in recovery. I created, we created a, a program that she could use, right? So I have that that you can use as well. And then a framework guide checklist. So this is saying like, okay, did I do this? Do I did this? You know, uh, do I have my email provider? Do I have um, some set dates? Do I have my content calendar? Like it has certain things so that you could say, how am I stepping into this, right? And you can check it off. Accountability is a part of this, like you get an accountability partner so that you can practice this stuff too. So you can practice showing. A lot of times people are scared of just showing up. Part of that is you get to practice. And I'm going to give out email layouts of like, what does that look like, right? What would be beneficial? How do I nurture? How do I educate? So I'm going to show you that as well on as part of the course. Okay, so here's just some people that I've worked with that are amazing. This is Natty Love. This is her second year in the, the full year program. Um, she is doing a personal growth podcast um, on self-development. We have Ale Alexis Obenmeyer, who is a writing coach, and uh, she wanted to leave her day job, and she did so that she could do writing coaching. Um, so she found her niche is able to make money through that um, outlet. This is Liz Portuondo and lives in North Carolina and Miami, and she has her groups, The Art of Self-Care. So she has a cabana on the beach and she invites people in and does that. And she does um, online as well. So very, very cool. Uh, we have Jen Colombo, who is also in the course right now. And she has the uh, Ex Creative Explorers Club membership. She has started. And um, she's doing some individual sessions now. We have Courtney Chandler, uh, who's also an art therapist, and she is moving into her online world. A lot of transition here from being in person to online. Um, we got Laura Hassel, another art therapist, um, and she does the Rebel um, art, art Group. And then this is Kristen, who was in recovery, doing art for self-care. And then Heather, who is also doing in-person workshops. So the program is for, you know, like I had mentioned, for those who are interested in um, doing in-person or online. It's, I think both is great. I think there's having as many streams as possible and it's fun. You always learn, but you got to do what feels good for you, right? Um, so who is this for? It is for, like I said, our therapists, coaches, our facilitators it's to grow your business, your private practice. If you want to sell books, courses, memberships, things along those lines, you get accountability, you get clear on your offers, and you get to practice those leadership skills and gain confidence. And you can even practice in the Creative Soul Society membership. We're a very safe and nurturing group. It, and who is it not for, you might be saying? <laughs> For those who don't want to do the work, um, for those of you who's just like, oh, I just want to have an online class and I just want it to sell on its own. Well, who are you going to sell it to, right? Um, so there is a system in place, that framework, so that you have someone to, to offer it to and who's going to want it. Okay, so you might be saying, okay, how much is all this stuff? Um, every year it changes, but uh, this is, I wanted to create this special package for all of you who are here. 
Um, the Artificial Manifest program, just to let you know, for everything that you're going to get, you get the Creative Soul Society membership for a year, the Thriving Creative course. Um, you actually get it one time for the Citrine package, but the, for the program, if we did the full year, you get it three times. Um, for the full year, you get 14 sessions, online painting classes, because um, I have a, a new, actually, I have a new 21-day art journaling healing experience coming out, so you, you get that my book, my deck, and those bonuses that I talked about, um, about how, you know, the 101 marketing and the, um, how to tackle procrastination and that overwhelm. Oh no, it's not moving. Hold on one second. Okay. So if you added all this up, this is not the price that I'm giving you today, but if you added all that up, right, is it would be like $8,000, right? Because I've been working on this and all of this has been like building, 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 right? But it's not $8,000, but I'm just showing you that's exactly how much those costs if you did each one of them individually. So I like to package things to put them all together so that you can use what feels good for you. So before I tell you how much it's going to cost of, for the Citrine package um, for today, I want you just to think for yourself, what do you need, right? It's like, how much would you pay to learn the marketing skills, okay? How would you, how much would you pay to, you know, learn how to make courses or memberships, write emails, show up online? Um, and how much would you pay, how much would it feel? Like, I'm just thinking of the feeling of you stepping into that vision, right? How much would you pay for that? So just think about it. how much is it worth to you, okay? Could be a thousand bucks. Could be five thousand bucks. Could be ten thousand bucks. Remember, it's not just like a one-time thing. It's more. It's like it's you start a business or you're doing a business. It's an evolution. It's growth. It's stretching yourself, right? So the Citrine package. What I created was that you get the one round of the Thriving Creative Course, which would be start in May. I'm gonna have um, so I want to keep the group at fifteen each. So we're gonna do one on Friday and then. Um, if Friday doesn't work for you, then I, I'm going to do a Saturday morning. So we'll have two separate groups so for those who, who work during the day. We'll be able to do the Saturday morning. Um, so you get one round of the Thriving Creative course. You get the full year of the Creative Soul Society membership. You get seven individual coaching sessions. Um, I'm going to throw in the Healing Art Journal experience, which I'm working on. Should be done by the end of the month. Can't wait to get those out to the people who've done the art therapy services and my book and deck and all those bonuses that I had mentioned before, right? So if this is something that you're leaning into, like if you feel that this is the next step for you, this is an opportunity. It's 2,200, um, you can pay in full, or it, I have a 10 month um, plan at 220. So like I said, in, within three months, if, you follow, if you're following the steps, you'll be able to make the money and have, make it consistently. Um, by, by doing the steps of the framework, okay? So you can think about it. Um, if you have questions, there's a part of here where it's thinking about, you know, you always have choices, right? Choices like, if I do nothing, what will happen? And if I decided to step into this, what could happen, right? So money replenishes, money is a good thing. And I just thinking about all the different coaches or courses that I've taken, I've always made my money back. Like I, sometimes it takes a little time, but it does, it does work. Um, and I've seen it for myself because I've been able to um, be able to grow my business and being able to, to feel really good about that. I'm just, so how long are the trainings weekly? Great question, Kate. Um, each, okay, the training is an hour and a half. So if you came to the Friday session, that's at 4 p.m., it would last till 5.30, right? And then the recorded, so you can watch replay. If you chose to come to the Saturday session, hour and a half. So it starts at 10 a.m. Uh, until 11.30. So 45 minutes is of teaching. Um, and then another 45 minutes is our round robin where we support each other. Sometimes we make art together about our, our business, but it is definitely for, it's like a mastermind of, of, of that brainstorming. And then obviously during the week, I do suggest you carving out that time. It could be as little as 15 minutes a day to work on your business, wherever you're at in your business. 
right? Whether it's writing an email, maybe it's um, making a post or setting up the post for the week, things like that, um, creating that that plan so that you are moving a momentum. Because like once you're once you're in it, it becomes easier. You're just you're you're doing it. You're showing up, right? Is there any other questions? Oh, Michelle wants the names. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely, um, I'll send you an email uh, this week and I can put everyone's names and their links. I didn't, I don't have them right this second <laughs> um, typed up, um, but I will definitely send you an email so you can check out what they're doing. Uh, actually, all of their stuff is on my website. My new website, Lee Guzman Studio, um, it has their testimonials and you can check out what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Don says, I'm looking to do a course through you in the fall. Will you have something then? Um, um, I, I possibly could have something in the, in the fall. I usually do, um, well, I do the, I do the thriving last year. I did it three times. And so that is what I'm, um, going to be doing now is doing in May. And then I'll probably do it again in October, November. Um, but I can't tell you I'll have the same. 2200 because that might change. So this, this is for now, like I said, I do um, offer different bundles, different packages. So this is a bundle that I put together for you today. Okay. So if you are on the fence at all, you are welcome to schedule a consultation call. I do have a couple sessions open for next week. If you want to talk about it a little bit more, like, is this a fit for me? Um, you're welcome to do that. I do have the citrine package on um, available. Oh, thank you, Becca. She put it on here. You can check out my site. Uh, I put it on there. So this is just for, it won't, won't stay up on there, but until, till May. And can you explain again, will it occur for the year and that is shorter time, eight weeks? Yeah. So if you did the full year of my Art of Helium Manifesting program, you get more coaching. You get 14 sessions instead of the seven. Um, and you get three rounds of the thriving creative course, meaning that, like I said, we're going to be in May, we'll be meeting again, October, November, and then, and then that would move on to the spring. So it's just kind of like this ongoing, um, yeah, you just get more of a package and more, more time together one-on-one -on -one and in the groups to build, because as the momentum comes, as you get things together, you get more clarity and then you get the support. Right. And that, I think that's what's important for me to even do this because I feel supported too. <laughs> I talk about what I've learned um, from other courses that I've done or in, in, in sharing it in the group and, and brainstorming. Hey, do you like this? We go over other people's websites, we go over each other's um, <clears throat> flyers, emails, right? So it's, you're, you're supported by other creatives and, and seeing that. Okay, awesome. So some people say they feel like they're not ready. Yeah, it, it is a commitment. So as I said, like it's like you're stepping into it, but this gives you the, the foundation to step into to making those offers. Okay, beautiful. So if any other questions come up, you are welcome to email me. Um, I'll be sending some emails out um, with the links as well. So if you want some time to think about it, I am excited. We have seven people joining us already. Um, so I'm going to hold space for about eight more. So if this feels like a good fit for you, um, then join us. It's um, I have fun. I enjoy doing it. And I mean, it's helped me make over six figures. So I support you as well. And I want you to have a thriving creative business too. Okay, beautiful. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing day. And um, yeah, I will see you later. I'm going to be doing the exact same webinar next Sunday. So if you see some emails saying I'm meeting uh, for the ripple effect, it'll be the same thing just to let you know. Okay, bye.